were very faithful uh, believers in Jesus Christ. And that's a good thing. What about the next one? The judicial branch. And I kind of gave this away at the beginning. Five people makes the majority of the nine person Supreme Court. And nowadays, five people can make the decision that we all have to deal with, for good or for bad. They do some good things, that's for sure. This is the bad things that make the media, though. It's the way it is. So five people only have to make that decision for everybody else. Is that really what the Constitution says? No. You read the Constitution, you'll see that the legislative branches say that it takes this much space to tell, tell us what the legislative branch is supposed to do. It takes about this much space for the president to tell us what the president is supposed to do. It takes about this much space for the judicial system. There's really not that much there. And actually what it's supposed to be, and there's such a minor part, minor branch of what these other two, these other two are supposed to be so much, they're not really equal. I mean, these other two are considerably stronger than the judicial branch. That's what it's supposed to be about. The first hundred years of American life, if the judicial branch, the Supreme Court, decided to do something that America did not want to do, America ignored them. That's a simple fact. And the Constitution supported that. But what do we do now? We revere them, we raise them up, and we just simply have to go with that, and you know, we have no choice as the people because, yeah, if we don't go with them, then we're arrested, then we're fined, then we're imprisoned, if we don't go with that. So, but that's what's happening in this world today. Why are we in such a mess? Because we allowed that to happen. We allowed five people to make a decision about the rest of, this, rest of the nation. That's what's going on there. Now, that's not the only reason why we're in such a mess. There's a lot more than that, of course. That's part of it right there. The executive and legislative branches are now subservient to the judicial branch. Now, according to the system, does that offend, does Jesus offend that particular system? Well, let's be honest. In 1973, Roe versus Wade happened. In 2003, homosexuality, to, to have any kind of law against homosexuality, was illegal. That happened. It led to what happened this past Wednesday. It is going to be the more and more. I could go on and on about other things, too. So what's happening? Now the judicial branch calls something unconstitutional, and the executive and legislative branch has to step back and say, oh no, we were wrong. Well, maybe they weren't wrong. Maybe the judicial branch is wrong. It's only five people that are saying so, anyway. And the treatment of ethnic groups and ethnic economic classes. I need to tread lightly here. Entitlements is one of those words that gets really thrown around. I'm telling you, there's an oxymoron to entitlements. If you pay into the Social Security system and the Medicare system, you are entitled to receive it back. That is an entitlement. But that offends you, some of you, because you think entitlement is something that you don't earn. Well, guess what? The actual word, if you look it up in Webster's Dictionary, entitlement is something that you're entitled to. It is something that you've earned. So what we have done, we have taken things that are really free gifts, like welfare and, and things like that, and we've called them things that we've earned. So I know a couple of years ago, Brother David got shouted down at the pulpit for calling Social Security an entitlement. Well, guess what? It is an entitlement. Those other things aren't. It's the system that the government gives you. These other things are simply gifts. And I really wish our society would actually see that. I think it would be much different. I think the welfare system would be a lot different if people actually saw that as a help rather than something they deserve. Or if it's just a help, it might help them to you know, get a job, something of that nature. What does the Bible say about that? It says it's okay to earn. It says it's okay to get a job and to earn money. 
to accumulate. It says, it, it says there's nothing wrong with that. You can glorify God and do that. You can hate God and do that too. You can glorify God and be poor. You can hate God and be poor. Money and God's favor. There, there is a, a gap there. Now they have a, a lot in common. Because you can do a lot to spread that through. But there really is a gap. There is a difference there. Let's not get those two mixed up. You can be wealthy and still serve God. Not serve your wealth. Let God handle your wealth. Those are things that are real. And there are people in this church that do that very well. That they allow God to handle their wealth. Whether their wealth is little or their wealth is a lot. They trust in God in those things. If you're the type of person that I just named, you may not know that because you're probably too humble to really know that. We need you this time. What I just preached, we desperately need you. We need you to teach us what it takes to have faith in God. We need an older generation to teach the younger generations how to trust in God with all that you have. And we need to pass it down. That salvation is not just a one-time decision. That it's something that happens over a lifetime. Of consistently, continually trusting in God. Consistently, continually praying. Consistently, continually studying the scripture. We need to that example in you. So please don't give up in this matter. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for using men like John the Baptist to spread it. We thank you for what your scripture says to us and what we can learn from that. But Father, there are times that we doubt you. There are times that we question your authority in our lives. Father, when these times happen, help us to back up. Help us to see what your scripture says. Through our relationship with you, Lord, that we can trust in you no matter what. Father, I pray for this time that for the ones that have not trusted you in a, self, in a saving way, that they realize what that means and they want to see your salvation today. Father, I pray for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand up. We're going to sing us an invitation song. We're going to ask you to raise cross. The altar is open for you one who'd like to pray. Let's all sing. When I survey
have our um, time of Lord's Supper, if you may be seated in the deacons and for us. I want to read this passage of scripture from 1 Corinthians 11 before we begin. Verses 27 through 32. Therefore, whoever eats the bread 